Okay, let's talk about the task test. And if you're watching this video, I assume you are studying for the task. And of course, you're going to be looking at a particular math problem here that's uh, definitely something you very well could see on the task. Now, um, as you probably well know, the task is a test very much like the GED and or high set. You're uh, probably familiar with the GED as that was um, the test has been used for many, many decades, and it's essentially a high school equivalency exam. But as time uh, has gone on over the last uh, several years here, uh, other states have um, introduced new tests that are basically alternatives to the GED, and the task is uh, one of those tests. So depending on what state you're in, you very well could have the option of taking the task or this may, uh, could be your only option to get in your high school equivalency. So uh, that's something you definitely should be doing. And typically what um, gives people the toughest time on these exams is the math portion of it. So we're going to go over a nice little uh, problem here in one second. A little bit about myself. I'm a middle and high school math teacher. been uh, teaching math for a long, long time and I actually uh, done a lot um, in the test prep uh, area, especially with the GED and other tests as well. I actually have a specific task math prep course. If you're interested in that, I'm going to leave the link in the description of this video. Uh, you can check that out if you like. But with that being said, let's take a look at this problem here. And there's a couple different ways you can reason through this, but I'm going to read you the problem. Then you should kind of like see if you can figure it out, and then of course I'm going to solve it. All right, so here we have two cars. Okay, let's call this car A, and let's call this car B. And you can see here, car A is trailing behind car B. It's going 70 miles per hour, and car B is going 60 miles per hour. And right now, car A is one mile behind car B. So what I want to know is how many minutes, okay, how many minutes will it take for car A to catch up to car B? Okay, so you understand the situation. Imagine you're down the turnpike or on the road or freeway, wherever you might be. Your uh, car A is be behind car B. It's going faster, right? So eventually it's going to catch up to car B. So this is going 70 miles per hour. Car B is going 60 miles per hour. And car A right now is one mile behind this car. So how many minutes will it be until car A can ca will catch up to car B? Okay, so uh, this, this problem, it's... Uh, relatively a basic problem but of course if you don't know some fundamental principles here you're you're, you're going to be lost but some of you can kind of hopefully reason through this so if you haven't if you think you could figure it out you should try to pause the video and try to at least come up with an answer um, of course I'm going to go through it right now okay so a couple things we need to know first of all let's get a sense of what's going on here so these cars are going down a freeway and car A is, uh, is closing in on car B because it's going faster. And its relative difference of speed is what? Okay, well, it's really 10 miles per hour. Okay, so this car is going 10 miles per hour faster than car B. So whether this is, whether car B could be going, say, 50, car, I'm sorry, car A going like 50 miles per hour, 10 mile, the 10 mile power difference would be car B going 40 miles per hour. You understand? So no matter what the situation is, car A is just 10 miles, going 10 miles per hour faster than car B. So a good way to think of this to help us out in our problem is, okay, let's say that this car right here was at stop. It was just not traveling at all. Well, then car A would be just going 10 miles per hour. Okay. So kind of think of it conceptually this way you're like okay well the difference here is 10 miles per hour well let's just call this let's just stop this car and let this car just go 10 miles per hour remember it just has to be 10 miles per hour more than whatever car B is going now the question becomes well how many minutes will it take for this car okay it's moving because this car is now stopped to go one mile okay so that's basically uh, what's going on in this picture from a relative standpoint. So if you were able to kind of see that, then that's good. Now what we have to do is actually apply a real important formula about um, time uh, and distance and speed. And this particular formula is something you should know. It's called rate times time equals distance. Another way to think of this as your, your rate is your speed 
if you will, as you know it. So speed, let's say like miles per hour, times the time you traveled is the dis or times the time, how much time you were at this speed is the distance you traveled. Let's just do a real basic example. If I'm going 50 miles per hour, okay, this is my speed, my rate, times a time of two hours, I'm going to go 50 times two or 100 miles. Now, a couple key components here, and I don't really want to um, kind of turn this particular video into a full lesson. Uh, that's what my course is for. But here, the units of measure has to be the same. So here we're talking about miles and we're talking about hours. So here, our time has to be in hours. In other words, we're talking about 50 miles per hour. I can't say, well, if I said, well, um, let's say the car was traveling for two minutes, I would have to change this around some, okay, in order to get my answer. So again, don't want to kind of deviate from this, but this is definitely a formula you want to know, okay? Rate times time equals distance. The rate, again, is like your speed, you're traveling, times the time, how much time you're at that speed is the distance you covered, and the units of measure have to be the same. So let me just kind of just one more time emphasize this. If I'm going miles per hour, okay, so if I'm going miles per hour, let's say 30 miles per hour, I want my time, that's my rate, I want my time to be in hours, okay? So if my rate is in miles per hour, my time, would I would want it to be in hours and my distance will be in miles, okay? So hopefully you kind of understand that. But let's go ahead and use this particular formula now to actually solve the problem. Okay, so rate times time equals distance. And what I have here is what? I have the rate, I have the speed, okay? So that's the rate, remember? And I have the distance, okay? So let's use a different color here. The distance is one mile, okay? So basically what I want to know is, okay, if I'm traveling 10 miles per hour, 10 miles per hour, at how much time did it take to go one mile? Okay, so this is my basic kind of formula here. And if you understand real basic algebra, which you definitely need to for the task, this would be something like this, 10x equals, say, 50. Okay, because I have a t here. That would be 10t equals 50. This is just an example equation, because I want to solve for t. Okay, I want to know, I, I know what the rate is, it's 10 miles per hour, I know what the distance was, it's one mile, I want to know how much time it took to, how much time it takes to go one mile traveling at 10 miles per hour. So I have to use this formula again, right? So I'm going 10 miles per hour, how much time does it take to cover that one mile? So it's 10 miles per hour times some t, some time, and that's going to be equal to one mile. So what we do here is solve this basic type of equation. We have to divide both, both sides of the equation by 10 to get what t is equal to. Now, if you're lost, okay, and uh, hopefully you're still with me, but if you are lost, don't get, to, don't get discouraged, okay? Just be like, okay, I got to make a mental note. You can learn this stuff. I'm here to tell you, no matter where you're at in your math education, whether you've struggled uh, for many years or, or if you get this, you can learn this, okay? So you just got to find your starting point, okay? But hopefully this is making sense to you. But let's finish this out, okay? So I have this formula here, okay? 10 miles per hour times t is equal to one mile. So let's just write it this way. 10 times t is equal to one. So let's solve for t. I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 10. So the time took is one-tenth of an hour. So remember, because my speed is in miles per hour and my distance was in miles, my time will be in hours. But I want to know how many minutes, okay? Remember the original question is how many minutes? So what I have to figure out is, okay, so one-tenth of an hour. So how many minutes is in one hour? Okay, so how many minutes is equal to one hour? So hopefully you said, oh, that's 60 minutes. So what I want to know is one-tenth of 60. Okay, one-tenth of 60 minutes, and that's six minutes. Six minutes. Okay, so again, I would say that this is, well, like a medium kind of level problem, but definitely something that uh, 
you very well could see on the task okay uh, it's it's um remember the task is it's a high school equivalency exam all right so you're talking about high school level math which is going to be a good amount of algebra and geometry and um you know you really do you know need to know this stuff that's why you know when people struggle on the GD task and high set they really struggle with the math section and I think it's because not because they can't learn it's because they don't have a good study plan or they may not be fully aware of how much math they really need to know okay so again um, you know I just want to leave you with this main message that you can definitely learn this but it's a considerable amount of math and you need a good plan and if you don't have your high school equivalency, it's you know it's a must-have goal to get that. So you're definitely on on the right track. So I congratulate you on watching this video because that shows you have a real interest in passing. Okay, so let's go and wrap up this video. Um, again, if you uh, need help with math, I'm going to leave the link in this uh, description of this video to my uh, task math prep course. Also on my YouTube channel, I literally have hundreds of videos. I've been on YouTube for many years. I'm posting all the time. I have many, many videos that can help you out, prepare for the task. So hopefully you'll consider uh, subscribing. And if you enjoyed this video, even though you may have found it confusing, <laughs> if you got something out of it, I definitely appreciate it. Thumbs up. And leave me some feedback. What state are you in? Do you have the option of taking uh, another test, uh, maybe the GED? Um, I know there are some states. I want to say New York. I could be uh, wrong in this, but I think New York may only offer the task. Again, I'm not quite sure about it, but I believe there are some states that only are going with the task. And this is kind of a... Um, kind of changing uh, thing as time goes on. Some states offer all three, some states offer two uh, of the three. Either way, when it comes to the math portion of it, whether you're taking the math portion of it, whether you're taking the GED task, I said, you're still going to need to know the same amount of mathematics, more or less. I mean, there's differences in the test in terms of the cost and uh, some of the format and whatnot. But uh, anyways, let me some feedback. Are you are you do you have to take the task? You know, what's your situation? Have you been struggling with math? Uh, try to read the comments and, and uh, you know, gives me ideas for future videos. But with that being uh, said, I definitely wish you all the best on the task. It's a worthy endeavor. Don't don't quit because it starts getting hard. OK, the, the worst thing you do is start studying and get discouraged. Stick with it until you pass. You can pass. Believe me, I've been helping people for years uh, pass these exams and really the only thing stopping you from getting your high school equivalency will be you okay not the material it's just hey everyone has a different starting point and different skill level but you can you can definitely do this but I wish you all the best uh, best on the task thank you for your time and have a great day